My goal in this video is to say 32% fewer ums. And on that note, um, I'm going to drink Rubens Brewing's Little Fox Red Ale. As I edit these videos, it does bug me a lot how many times I say um. So I am going to, I've been thinking for a little while, but I'm going to remind myself now verbally by saying it out loud that I'm going to try to say a lot fewer ums. My little mental bookmarks or thinking pauses, I don't know what I shall fill them with. But we'll see. And uh, this is just how I'm starting out. This video may have more ums uh, than any other before, in which case I'll edit half of them out. Uh, so, on that note, as I do not say that word, is it even a word? What makes a red ale a red ale? Red ales are amber ales. Amber ales are red ales. They are two names for the same thing. They are ales that lie between pale ales and dark ales. They're usually close cousins too, if not pretty much exactly the same as brown ales. They are known to balance uh, maltiness and hoppiness in a, in a way that generally makes them widely pleasing. They are also apparently exceptionally popular in the U.S., though there are traditional or historic, or maybe not traditional or historic, but at least popular styles, uh, Irish red ales, uh, which have their own family and are closely related, if not the same thing, just an Irish exploration of that style. Anyways, they are middle of the rotors. I have long loved them for being middle of the rotors. And just because it's a middle of the rotor doesn't mean it's bad beer, that's for sure. Rubens Brewing, out of, uh, I think, Woodenville, uh, Seattle area. I keep saying that. Yeah, Seattle. Uh, I like a lot of their beers, and this one is one in particular that my wife enjoyed a lot earlier this year. And now I'm going to drink it because there's one can left in the fridge. Their own description of this is it is a modern take on a classic style by combining notes of dark caramel, cherry, and light chocolate with a low level of bitterness and a clean finish. This beer has a sly level of drinkability that encourages repeat visits, inspired in part by our brewmaster's favorite alt beer, which is a very classic German style, which I will not try to define right now because I don't recall off the top of my head what it is. All that said, let's uh, dive in and see how this one stands up. I have, well, before I do that, I have had several ambers and red ales recently. A particularly recent one of them was Alaskan's Amber. And I noted that that one fell to the sweeter side of the middle of the road. The hoppiness was very muted, if any, and it just had a very sweet flavor overall. I don't recall that much about how this one stands. So it's not my first time drinking it, but it is the first time I'm drinking it in a month. So I should be going into it mostly new, but I do recall I enjoyed it a lot. So let's see if I can remember why. Mmm, yeah, maltiness. And it's kind of a, a sweet bread. Not a, not a a hala or a or like an enriched loaf just a bread that has some sweetness to it there's some peach or apricot uh, peach almost dried peach actually so it has that slightly uh, the slightly intenser flavor or scent aroma it's not a flavor it's just an aroma it's in my nose not my mouth so sweet breads Dried peaches. I could convince myself there's a hint of grassiness in here, but I don't know if that's just nuance to the peach. It smells good. It smells inviting. It doesn't... Well, while I picked up sweet bread pretty quickly, that doesn't smell like a dominant part of the flavor. I think the most dominant part of this is the peach, the dried peach kind of note. 
And so I'm expecting the sweetness to be lower on this or not. The, the nose isn't indicating that it, is, that it is a particularly sweet beer. It tells me there's other things going on. There's a little minerality to this as well, almost like it's a, a club soda. You know, they have the, the carbonic acid dissolved in the water to make your club soda. It has that similar um, effervescing kind of, I'm expecting it to be really bubbly. The head was pretty finely, fine bubbles, and it's happy to come back. There's some rockiness to it. If I can get it to go in a circle, it just wants to slide back and forth. My arm's not working right. Otherwise, it's pretty. Yeah. Let's drink it now. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one. Still do. So what I'm getting, there is a an almost smokiness or roasted character to this, like at the front, kind of the top of the mouth. Then you get this peach. It's almost like you, you mixed dried peaches and fresh peaches in like a blender and made a paste out of it. That kind of smell, it has elements of both fresh and dried peach. You have this underlying kind of foundation of breadiness. And then you got this really pleasant, simple, but then cleansing. Um, um, and I'm saying that word again. B hop. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Hop, bite. But it's really... It's, it's really delicately applied. Like it's just the, 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 the painter who's, who's adding the, the highlights to bring out some additional depth as they're fin finishing up their painting, their, their piece of art. Just these little highlights, very delicate, very sensitively applied. And it just, it just kind of slides in there, comes up, and then it's that really pleasant finish. I know my wife liked this, so I know that it has a very low apparent bitterness. So even with that hop grassiness coming through at the finish, it's not at all a dominant aspect, though I would say it is more than Alaskan's was. Yeah, that's really nice. And in fact, I think that kind of roastiness that came out at the front, it, it's almost like it, it continues in through and into the hoppiness. They, they feel like they're in the same flavor category the same impact on my on the flavors but coming at the beginning they've got all this liquid in there in, in the mouth there's that juicy uh peach going on that's not particularly sweet it's just kind of really peachy and then the hi kitty and then the uh the breadiness that's kind of undergirding it all but that that roastiness kind of continues on and then becomes or fades into the excuse me fades into that that hoppiness going down the, the the back of the mouth and throat as I swallow it, and then you know it it just lingers around. The first swallow it didn't feel like it had a whole lot of a finish to it, but then the second and third, that's when I started noticing that hoppiness. So I wonder if it as it warmed that kind of became more prevalent. That's a very nice beer. So what I like about this, and some of this will be in contrast to Alaskan's Amber. So Alaskan's Amber, I enjoyed. It's a good beer. It's just to the sweeter side of things. And so if I had to pick between this and, Alas and an Alaskan Amber on any given day, I would pick this. It is decidedly a drier beer. It is decidedly less sweet. It also has a whole lot more going on. It just, it's not that it feels busy, it's not that it's necessarily complex. There's just more aspects to it. And so there's more to enjoy as I go through the sensations of drinking it. And at the same time, it's not shouty or, hey, look at me over here. I'm a sly little fox. Um, it's more just more. It's, it's, it feels a little bit bigger and it feels more interesting to drink. And the things that are interesting about it are pleasantly interesting, which always helps a lot, right? <laughs> Anyways, I think I'm going to leave that there. This is Rubens Brewing's Little Fox Red Ale. 
a decidedly delicious sly little treat. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.